this can't be queuing all the way from Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes is not that interesting. I don't enjoy driving at all, no. It's a waste of good time you could be working. Well, we went to an event in Bristol on offshore energy. Seamus got his postdoc researcher, Andrew, to drive so that he could sit in the passenger seat and work on his presentation that he was going to have to give all the way there. I definitely had some of it done already. Some of it. Uh, we're driving down to Cranfield University to uh, go to their Ocean Systems Laboratory and they're testing two different items that both relate to a floating wind turbine platform that I call Tetrafloat. Um, one item is what I call a single buoyant element. It's just a float with a plate underneath it called a heave plate. And then the second thing for them to test is actually in the back of the car at the moment. Uh, and it's something that uh, Simon has put together. It's a small replica, a really very small replica of the full-scale wind turbine support. And it's not a perfect replica because it uses very simple components, but it has all the characteristics. And what we're really trying to do is make sure that when you put this in a tank and you have the center of gravity in the right place and you put some waves past it, that it remains suitably calm, that you could put a wind turbine on the top. The wind turbines, they're actually turning around. Down some back roads through a small village called Mulso, and Cranfield University appears out of nowhere. Here we are. First things first, I'm going to stop in this garage and get us a cup of coffee. That'll do nicely. Ocean Systems Laboratory. I forgot you were coming. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, I had a very early That's start. Nice. I had a very early start this morning. <laughs> That's good. Hold my well, well, you'll see. It's a. It's kind of triangle. It's a meter. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we see the reflection off the top of the water here as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The tank's very long so that they can do tests on boats because it's very d you could in theory keep the boat sail and then move the water past it but that's very difficult because you have to cycle the water all the way around and make sure it's fully laminar on both sides. So it's much easier to have a very long tank and then you move the boat while generating waves for it to go through. I do want to see what happens when that small water plane area mm -hmm. is in there because it, the, the idea was to pull the heave plate deep under there and to have not okay. too much water plane area. Okay, okay. Okay, anyway, no, nice drawing. I wish I could use... Uh, is that a pro engineer or is it for you? It's Katia. Oh, Katia, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. the French, uh, the French like Katia. Yeah. yeah. It takes a little bit of getting out, so do you manage? Yeah. It took a lot more effort to get it in, actually. Yeah, it's okay. Ah, it's cool. It's only three kilos. Three kilos? Yeah. I'm on the table and down. Well, hopefully it's three kilos. Um, yeah, we need a bigger lab, really. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. So let me go back and uh, just try and talk through the logic. Um, we've got heave plates down at the bottom. They were supposed to be articulated so that, um, particularly when, when a wave rises up and gives us extra lift, we don't want to put more compression in these uh, elements. That's sort of a core piece of the design thinking, but we do want to resist pulling back up through the water. We want to take energy out of that. It gives you a really good idea about how, how light the whole thing is intended to be, because you say 3,000 tons for a 10 megawatt machine, and 3,000 tons sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot. It's, it's really, really very light. The spars here are, are a part of the ultimate design. Because we've got buoyant elements underneath each corner, they would be intrinsically unstable. They want to pop out one way or another. And so you do need some kind of piece of structure to, to hold them vertical relative to the plane of the structure. And that's what, what they do. In terms of mass that you haven't... Uh, we haven't put anything on there at the moment. Mass, yeah. It doesn't have to be beautiful, a piece of mass on the top to be approximately right. I think that's going to require a bit of judgment. We have to see it in the tank first be because the water plane area is small. And if you put a big mass up here, it will... But I think we, you know, I think we put it in, put it in the tank and put some waves over it and see what happens. And very probably we find out some basic things that uh, we weren't expecting to find out. I don't know. Um, 
you've got a new model to have a, a go at testing. Yes. Um, you and me have some work to do over the next seven days to make sure a proposal gets in, yes. and then and then we see what happens. And I think we have to go. Okay. Shall we? Okay. Thank you very much, Flora. Yes. No, thanks very much, Aurelia. Very happy indeed, yes, uh, very happy. I think we put uh, them through a lot of challenges the first time around, and they, I think they're pleased that they've got an easier model to work with this time. I'm confident it's all going to go forward. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm confident it's all going to go well, but I think it's definitely going to go forward, and it's definitely doing interesting things. And for an engineer, and particularly an engineering academic, for things to be moving forward and interesting is a pretty good result.